No, this isn't clickbait. I've uncovered a method that no one's discussing. When Zamrak descended on the world mid last year, he delivered a codex of lost knowledge to the world of Gilinor. This codex can be combined with 20 Kyrie components salvaged from the gear of Siren's top general to forge a Greater Sunshine or Death Swiftness ability codex. Meanwhile, in the Eastern Lands, Sao Tok's puppet, Masuda, has been pumping countless Tier 82 War Spears into the world. These spears contain the components necessary to assemble the Dragon Slayer Ability Codex, and the stats required to power Siren's armor in the wilderness. Let's discuss how we'll use the Tools of the Gods. For this method, we will be disassembling Serenic Armor and Masuda's War Spears for Kaiweer and Resilient Components. Each piece of armor gives 4 Kaiweer Components, and each spear gives 12 Resilient Components when leveled to level 9. That means every 5 armor pieces and every 5 spears we will get enough Invention Components to craft 1 Greater Death Swiftness Codex and 1 Dragon Slayer Codex. Before we jump too far into this, consider dropping a sub so you don't miss out on future groundbreaking content. Every subscription's appreciated. I think I should give a quick disclaimer here. You will need about 4 to 500 million GP to comfortably start this method, and price fluctuations can cut into profits if you aren't careful. I've slow purchased Crest of Siren on the GE for 36 million GP each. The crest can be combined with dormant anima core body and legs to make anima core armor of Siren. It's possible to upgrade the God Wars 2 armor using essence from every faction. Legs require two of each essence and bodies require three. When you disassemble a level 9 refined piece of armor, it returns the regular version and four Kaiweer components. Disassembling the normal version just destroys the whole armor piece. Right now, it's cheaper to upgrade the legs to refined and then keep the body as is. Looking at all my input costs, that puts the price per Kyrie component right around 8 mil or so. To make a greater death swiftness, you need to combine 20 of these components, which is about 160 mil, and then one codex of lost knowledge, which is around 160 mil also. So the total price is about 320 mil to make one of these codices. The Death Swiftness currently sells for around 470 mil, putting you at almost 150 mil profit per codex. Sunshine sells around 400 mil, so it's not worth doing right now, but this could change soon. I assume the margins will also go down after this video, but it should still remain good GP due to the high input requirements and the risk involved with the method. The second codex we'll be making, the Dragon Slayer Ability Codex, takes 5 spears, 100 blackstone hearts, and 2 onyx, and it sells for around 75 mil right now, which gives over 35 mil profit. I'll share an AFK method at Abyssal Demons to level your gear that will get you approximately 5 anima core pieces and 4 spears to level 9 every hour. You'll also get a few mil in drops to help offset setup costs for this method. With current prices, this comes out to over 175 million GP per hour, 3.5 million invention XP, and 1 million melee XP. I have two separate presets that I use, one of them is for leveling the gear and the other is for disassembling, augmenting, and crafting. Each trip I'll level 1.5 spears to level 9 and both my top and bottom to level 9. Then I tally away and load out my disassembly preset. The disassembling preset places my leveled gear near the disassembly icon. You'll have either one or two spears at level 9 depending on the trip. Only disassemble the level 9 one, disassemble both the anima core pieces, and then build new ones. I 
I use a Luck of the Dwarves to teleport to Keldegrim for the invention table, and then I augment my refined legs there. You can also craft a Dragon Slayer Codex on this table after you buy the blueprints from the Elite Dungeon Reward Shop. Next, I augment either one or two spears depending on how many I disassembled, and I augment my new anima core body. I finish up by placing my gizmos back in the gear. For your spear, use a precise gizmo. For your armor, use demon slayer on one piece and scavenging four on the other. Scavenging four can pay off big time here. If you can, add enlighten three or four to every item to increase the leveling speed 9 or 12%. I don't have these, so I've just used DPS perks on my gear. After your gear is set up, load the second preset to level it. Besides the armor we just made, I use a masterwork helm for accuracy and damage. Then I pop on my best melee cape, a scripture of jazz. I actually don't activate the scripture, but it gives some combat boost, so it's good to include it. My boots are demon slayer boots, which give a 4% damage buff. And then I have Cinder Banes for the poison chance and a luck of dwarves to get rare drop table drops and not miss out on that hazel mirror ring. Finally, I use a demon horn necklace for prayer restoration. The inventory setup isn't too complicated. I have a spring cleaner and drop placeholders, then some aggro overloads with potion reservoirs. Next is an attuned ectoplasmator to bury the demon ashes and restore prayer. I also pop in some ghostly essence to recharge this between trips. You might want a little bit more than 50. After that, I have an activated and an inactive XP capacitor 5000. These are the most critical part for the setup. They cost under 3 mil and they double invention experience for 4 items to get them to level 9. Once the first capacitor is used up, activate the second one. I also keep a second augmented war spear in my inventory. When the equipped spear hits level 9, I swap to this one to finish the trip. The last two items I have are a cannon and volcanic protection. We'll be killing abyssal demons in level 18 wilderness for this method. It's better to kill them here than other locations because there are many more spawns and you get a 10% damage buff from the wilderness threat level. There is one downside to the threat level though. Periodically, a mob of wilderness monsters will attack that will hit you very hard and kill you if you aren't paying attention. It's a good idea to keep an eye on your screen so you can escape when this happens, just surge and dive away, and then once they despawn, go back. After that one spawn, they usually won't appear again for your entire trip, so it's safe to fully AFK. The Volcanic Protection will keep you safe from the Volcano. I'd also consider using the Defense Cape perk to extend your life a little bit if you do get clapped, and you can have a Legendary Pet to pick up drops and drag you away with the Lifesaver perk. Get to the spot, teleport to the Wilderness Lodestone after ensuring your skull is off. Then you can just run east until you hit an Obelisk there, or you can teleport to it, which the level 18 one. Place your cannon in the southeast between three tree stumps, and then stand in this spot one or two squares east of the obelisk. Activate your potion reservoir and turn on soul split, turmoil, and protect item. The protect items in case that mob of monsters kills you. I only had that happen once, and the death cost is 50k, so it doesn't really matter too much either way. And then of course pop out your legendary familiar to pick up some drops here. For your action bar, the most important abilities to have in order are Meteor Strike with the Corbicula Rex perk from Dino Farm, then Berserk, Cleave, Hurricane, and Quake. These are your core main area hitting abilities and they'll get you a ton of kills. After that, only use basic abilities. If you put in a threshold ability, it'll make you use Meteor Strike and Berserk less often so it actually reduces your kills per hour. It will take about 24 minutes to level your top and legs to level 9. Make sure to swap the spear midway through. If you start with a fresh spear, it will take about 16 minutes for it to hit level 9. If it starts from level 6, it will take approximately 8 minutes to hit level 9. 
It's also possible to bring more spears without gizmos and disassemble them all at level 6. This is higher GP per hour, but it's a lot more effort to maintain and track, so I don't really recommend it for an AFK setup. Another decent alternative is to level one spear to nine, and then the other to six, then disassemble them both after each trip. Make sure you don't have any gizmos in the level six spear. Once your top and bottom are level nine, scoop up the cannon and load your disassembling preset. Destroy your old gear and prepare another set. Then head back to the wilderness and keep leveling. If you don't like the wilderness method, you can use the Dungeoneering Cape to teleport to the Mauritania Slayer Dungeon and AFK Abyssal Demons there. It will be considerably slower, but you can breathe easy knowing you're not going to have a group of monsters pile you all of a sudden. When you're selling your codices, make sure to take your time. These are very expensive items, so there isn't someone buying them at a reasonable price all day long. Let the offer sit for a while and you will come out with much more money per hour. The same goes for buying the equipment used to get the components. And one more thing, if you're planning to unlock the Greater Sunshine and Death Swiftness abilities yourself, make your own. It only takes 10 components instead of 20, so you're effectively making like 300 million GP per hour if you just make your own ability upgrades. Thank you for watching this guide. Make sure to share it with others and leave a like if you found it helpful. Good luck with the games.